Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. Welcome to the Criminality Podcast, the podcast where we know that loving reality, Rebecca, isn't a crime. How are you? I'm great. I love the authority that you you had when you said that. I believed it. And um, I'm great. And I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. You have to believe it and receive it. It's it's a two-parter there. Two. <laughs> it's an exchange. <laughs> it is. So, so much has gone on in the last two weeks since we've talked. We've got Jin, more Jin Shaw, the whole GoFundMe situation. I think that was up for like oh two hours, gosh. right? Yeah, that got pulled. They raised a whopping $255 before pulling the plug. So um, sorry for those people who shelled out those dollars. They will never see anything for that. <laughs> but all they needed were 10,000 souls that gave $250. <laughs> so where are the 9,999 others? Yeah, we're soulless, I guess, just absolutely (laughs) soulless. You know, the audacity, I mean, we can't spend too much time on this, but I think I posted this, but I was like, have you ever heard of a court-appointed attorney? Like, who do you think you are? I know. Unbelievable. I know. Unbelievable is the right word for her. So before we get into the episode, though, we have to talk about our two weeks ago, our TV recommendations. We took the internet by storm. Best ones we've ever had. (laughs) We broke the internet. It's really true. <laughs> it's true. People loved our suggestions. And I think that was like our highest engagement. I didn't formally look at the metrics, but I felt yeah. it. <laughs> felt it in your heart. But we even <laughs> received that as well, Rebecca. I, I do. I hold that tightly. And and for good reason. Yes. Girls Five Ever. Fun. You enjoyed that, right? Just so much. So grateful for the recommendation. It was just, it, it really felt like my new Great News 30 Rock, kind of like, right. I just want to, it's like comforting and fun and quick and snappy. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. But then the other one we got to <laughs> was yours, which was Mayor of Mayor East, of East Town, Town, or of Mayor from and East Town so- is what I said. <laughs> Or the mayor of East Town. I'm convinced it's a play on words and because she is like the mayor. I'm very, I would love to hear from a writer if I'm right about that. Absolutely. So there, we are going to talk for just a minute about this. So spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. We'll have the times in the uh, show notes. So just if you haven't watched it yet, you don't want to hear about it. We're going to talk about it for a minute. But Rebecca, we ended up coming to kind of the conclusion of what was going to happen at the end, although we had 13,000 theories to go along with it. So (laughs) I know I feel uncomfortable even taking credit for being close to right because I honestly can't remember where everything came from, like what started in my own thoughts versus what you said and other listeners commented. Then Stephen King had to weigh in. And I was like, well, once I saw that, I couldn't unsee it. And I also I put like a lot of weight in his opinion because right. like, if he, does he is saying that he this he is like the master of story and plot. So once he put his two cents in, I was like, it's got to be. Yeah, it was. our um, <laughs> friend Stacy, she put it in my head because she was on Reddit and looking through it. So I take no credit for ever that even getting in my mind. But once it yeah, was there, Stacey perfect. commented mm-hmm. and had this all lined out. I, I saw that and I'm so impressed by it. 
because me too. I think if I hadn't known, I would have really been taken by surprise at the finale. And I'm almost sad that I wasn't. Me too. I just couldn't stop reading. I just was like, I knew it was going to be him. So I was waiting for the reveal and it happened and it was satisfying. But I was like, how much better to be like, whoa, I did not see that coming, which I think a lot of people felt that way. Oh, for sure. If you didn't follow Stephen King on Sunday earlier <laughs> and poor people right. that had HBO Max, you were one of those who <gasps> lost the connection. I don't even know what you guys were doing. That was my heart broke for oh, you. I honestly wish it, it was like a story within the story because we were at our friend's house at their beach house. It was Memorial Day weekend and they had not watched Mayor of Easttown. And I had texted them prior to coming like, hey, are you guys watching? Thinking, because if you're not, we're going to have a an awkward moment on Sunday night when we right. have to like leave <laughs> to watch or retire to our bedroom to like watch it on our phone. Cause I wasn't about to like not watch it in real time. No. And they were like, we haven't, but we've been wanting to. And then the weather ended up being terrible, rained all day. And they were like, can we just, do you mind if we watch it? So my husband and I rewatched the entire show with them Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. <laughs> like we dipped in and out sure. and like let them, but it was so fun to experience it with another couple who had just started it. And it was like dark and stormy at the beach. It was just fun. We were also about 10 miles away from Delaware County. Oh, well, 10, I'm bad at numbers and mileage. Was it by distance. a Sonic? If it was by a Sonic, that's normally about 10 miles from wherever you are. I don't think so, but it was near a Wawa. <laughs> oh, okay. We have Wawas. It's in South Jersey, which is close to Philadelphia. So People in this area have that accent slightly. So I just felt like we were getting the immersive experience. It was amazing. But then HBO didn't come on and we were like refreshing. It was craziness. And then it finally did. But what a what a ride. It was quite a ride. And my husband, he watched it with me. Well, I watched the first four and then I was like, Will you just watch this show with me? He's like, sure, but he wanted to watch the first one. And I thought he'll watch the first and then be done. Then he wanted to watch them. So I watched them all twice because it's the same oh, thing. Good. You want to watch it with somebody and be like, who do you think it is? You big dummy. That's not it at all. <laughs> it does, it's the power is intoxicating when you're like, when they're like, oh, well, it's obviously the priest. And you're like, oh, okay. well, okay. okay. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was such a fun watch. I, HBO is just knocking out of the park with those miniseries. Minus the undoing. How far off was that from this? They're just... Honestly, it's like, was somebody sick that day? Like, who was in charge? (laughs) They just really um, lost the magic on that one. But I kind of realized I'm the worst person to watch these things with because, you know, they're having their real-time reactions to the show. And, and, oh, my gosh. And, like, you know, there's so much heartbreak. And I'm just like, oh, just wait. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't believe her. You know, (laughs) I cannot. My husband was like, will you stop? Let them have an experience. I couldn't help myself. I get it. I totally get it. My husband was guessing things and the whole time I'm just like, okay, whatever you say. I never thought that a million times and we're Googling (laughs) things and like spoilers. So that was so much fun. And if you haven't watched it, that was our official recommendation. You have to watch it. We'll have new recommendations at the end of the show, but those, can we get any better? I don't know. We should probably I know just that stop might just there. be our, our gold star standard, seriously. But um, but thanks again for the rec. And uh, that was a fun that was a fun one. Yeah, I loved it. That was so great. So this week, the story we're going to get into, um, I get had three clues and they were Nutcracker, Sia and Nationals. Nationals. And Rebecca, yes. you, along with many of our listeners, figured it out. We're talking about dance moms. We sure are. And I, it took me even it took me too long, frankly, but pretty much after we stopped recording and I went home, I was like, oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but it is Dance Moms. I'm so excited. Do you have any history with Dance Moms? I know you said your daughter may have watched it. Oh, my daughter has for sure watched it. It's kind of her. She loves like um, the pageant one. And oh, the yeah. Teen Toddlers and Tiaras. <gasps> Toddlers and Tiaras. She I loves be talking that. talking to her. Yeah. No, she is really pretty hardcore on the shows I don't watch, but she's had Dance Moms on enough that I've seen a bunch right. of early, early days. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know that I'll know all the moms by name. If you tell me who their daughters are, I'll be able to figure it out. Obviously, I know Abby and that the general premise. <laughs> Perfect. I'm excited. So whether you agree with her practices or not, Abby Lee Miller is a name maker. She's been the person behind some of the names and faces we're going to see for a really long time. There's a long list of names that have come through the Abby Lee Dance Company, including Maddie Ziegler, a.k.a. Young Sia, who was in all of her music videos that Sia was basically like, you be me in all of these things, and Jojo Siwa. 
Yeah, I so saw jo- that one. Yeah, aka that bubbly YouTuber with the giant bow on her head, and she has so much money. She literally put in a Seven Eleven type thing in her house to have slushies and nachos around the clock. You know my heart and my feelings about nachos. We do, and it should be respected. But this is why our kids want to be YouTube influencers. Like, not helpful. <laughs> oh, so my daughter today was like, I I don't know how we got on the job the thing about jobs. And she said, well, I would just like want an easy job, like something like you that you do at home, like, which (laughs) appreciate her, you know, but I'm like, also, I drove you guys around for three hours and your brother ended up peeing in a cup because we were stuck in a line. (laughs) So real easy. (laughs) I'd love to tell you that's not a true story, but it happened today. So, oh boy, all of that to say, yeah. So YouTubers have ruined children, but all that to say that while Abby Miller is loud, obnoxious, mean, aggressive, and terrifying. She's also really talented, and people around the world continue to seek her out to make their kids into stars. After all, she's been doing this for her whole life, literally. Abby Lee Miller was born September 21st, 1965, to her parents, George and Marianne Lorraine Miller, who is this huge dance teacher in Miami, Florida. Hmm. Her parents named Abby after, do you want to guess who she was named after? Abby, uh, Abigail, I can't think of any Abigails that are famous. I mean, Dear Abby? Dear Abby or her dad's ex-girlfriend, his the prettiest ex-girlfriend oh. he ever had. Is that not horrible? I can't believe I didn't think of that. That's I know. horrible. I really <laughs> set you up very poorly for that, but like... That's awful for everyone involved. Everyone. Uh, I named you after the pretty ex-girlfriend, not your mom. So Marianne and George, though, were married when they were 36, and Abby was born when they were 38. Marianne was an incredibly well-respected dance teacher. She owned tons of studios in Miami where Abby Lee was born. After she was born, Marianne decided she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. That lasted until Abby fell off the dining room table, and she realized maybe I should go back to work. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this around the (laughs) clock. George was in lawn care and he would come home from work at 3 p.m. and then Marianne would head off to the studio. So they kind of would pass her off. Yeah, so it worked for them. Abby was an only child and she ended up spending a lot of time watching TV. She once called TV her best friend and I felt that on a spiritual level. (laughs) (laughs) We have something in common with Abby Lee Miller. (laughs) Oh, wow. Who knew? I know. So she talked a little in one interview I watched, which I originally told Rebecca to watch, and then I immediately took it back because she talks about a lot of things, and I wanted some of this to be a surprise for her. She struggled with her weight throughout her life. When she was a kid, her dad was really hard on her and would say things like, why are you eating like you're going to the electric chair? If you ever wonder why she was so abrupt, I think it kind of came from her dad. He seemed to be, well, I mean, wow. he named her after his hot ex-girlfriend. So there's... <laughs> yeah, this this guy's a piece of work. <laughs> Not a lot of sensitivity there, I would say. So while Abby had the entire dance world right at her fingertips, she was never really big into dancing. She liked the creative side of things, uh, the costumes, and she liked to create the dances. Plus, her mom was basically like, I don't want to be the one to have the kid that's I'm pushing my kid along. Like, my kid's going to be front and center, and I own these places. When Abby was just 14 years old, she begged her mom to let her coordinate her own dance team. Her mom allows her to, and this team wins first place in their first competition. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she was very, very driven. So from there on out, really, Abby knew what she was born to do. She knew that she had the talent, she had the knowledge to be able to turn people into stars. When Abby was just 22 years old, she took over her mother's dance studio after the family moved back to Pennsylvania. Her parents actually grew up, I think, like one street away from each other in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. Um, They were originally from there. They moved back, and she takes it over at 22 years old. Dang. Yeah, her goal was to produce what she called employable dancers. Her book, Everything I Learned About Life, I Learned in Dance Class, which I had to read, talks at length about all the dancers who've come out of her studio. I'm talking tons, so many on Broadway. They're choreographers now. They've been in Hamilton. Just everything imaginable. Big names have come out of there in the world of dance. I would not have guessed. I mean, that's that's. Very impressive. 
probably 20 pages in font 16, I would say, that she put these names <laughs> in. <laughs> but no, she really Still. did literally have a list of names and what wow. they've done. Yeah, which, I mean, I don't blame her. She's she's accomplished a lot. For years, though, she runs Abby Lee Dance Company, a.k.a. the ALDC. You hear them talk about the ALDC a lot. So during this time, her dad helps run the books. He does this for years, and that is until he gets sick. She said until then, she never had to worry about money. She told this one story, which is wild, where she was a kid and her dad gave her a credit card and she uses too much. I'm talking 12 years old. She uses it. They say, hey, you don't have enough on this card. She goes upstairs to, I guess, the credit card people in the department store. I don't know how things worked or (laughs) currently work. And they called her dad and upped her limit. And so she was able to buy it. So she really did not want for anything, but she also didn't really have a great concept of money, which is going to come up a little bit more later. So she said that until her dad got sick, she never had to worry about this money. And she said, quote, suddenly I found myself in charge of everything business related. Finances were fine by me. I had no problem spending money. And that is what we call foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Oh, boy. So, Rebecca, any idea what an hour of dance would cost from Abby Lee Miller, the pride of Pennsylvania, until Mayor of Easttown came around? Yes, that's right. Her rightful title. <laughs> uh, in the in the mid 2000s? What yeah. are we talking? Early aughts? Let's say 2010. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know. I feel the pressure. I'm not on prices right, but I'm going to go with $75. Whoa. Okay. You ready for this? According to her book, 16 hours of dance instruction, 16 hours a month, came to $282, which was $70 a week or $4.40 an hour. Oh, she's grossly undercharging. She is. And she also claimed that whenever her show started, she didn't up her prices, that they stayed the same. Now, what they are now, I don't know. But this is when she wrote her book. Wait, so it breaks down to what an hour? Like $4.40 an hour. Now you have multiple kids. I get it. So they're all in a class, say of like 10 or 12. That's still not. Yeah. Doesn't seem like enough to sustain Other people. The business. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking okay. kids are getting out of school and doing it. So it's not an all day. It's not 24 right. hours a day or anything. Right. So wow. according to your book, that's what it says. But as we'll come to find out, she's not great with these numbers. So maybe something was wrong there. <laughs> After taking over finances from her dad, she realized something really wasn't going right. In 2010, she ended up filing for bankruptcy. At this point, she owed more than $400,000. Yeah, she said she fell behind at this time on paying her real estate taxes and was facing foreclosure. She said $106,000 of her debt was due to the dance studio. And at this time, she said it was because of the recession. So people aren't coming in for dance. That's something people quickly canceled on during that time. So she was going to be working on a bankruptcy reorganization plan. And that will be coming up again a little later. But not to worry for Abby, in 2011, things were looking a little better for her. And Hollywood came knocking, but... It wouldn't be long before the police would as well. Abby had this friend named John Carella, and he was talking to her about wanting to do this reality show. He was a dancer, and he was looking at various studios throughout the United States to pitch as a reality TV show about dancers. He clearly knew there was a lot of crazy town in the dance world. John and Abby take the idea of Dance Moms to Brian Stinson, who was this television producer and eventually became the co-creator of Dance Moms. The original idea was that they were going to take a look at different studios throughout the country. They quickly realized there was enough crazy in Pittsburgh, and they just stopped right there. Stay in one place. Yeah. Exactly. So Collins Avenue Entertainment was the production company that ends up selling their show. Remember the name Collins Entertainment. And they sell it to Lifetime, the company that buys the show and you know where we watch it. Originally, it was just going to be the moms and the daughters, not the instructors, but once producers saw Abby, the vision definitely changed a little bit. I can imagine. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, She gives us some of the best gifts that are available on the internet, if we're being honest. So what ended up happening was Abby sends these clips and videos of the kids and the moms to this casting director of who she wanted, and the casting director comes there ready to work with them. Abby says the final team they cast was really a group of misfits. She said normally when she's making these teams, 
they're only about two years of age difference between the oldest and the youngest. They're all about the same height. They're about the same abilities. And she said this casting, though, was all over the place. And if you remember, there's Maddie. Her sister Mackenzie is real young. You know, they, yeah. it is really kind of like, huh, that doesn't really make sense. But they made it work. Uh, one fun fact about the show I found out, and it is interesting to me, I don't know about you, when people on these TV shows get to watch the TV shows, you know, do you get a week in advance, a month? Like, are you fired up? But they got to watch it whenever it came out. That was it. What is it with the housewives? Don't they get to know before? Because I feel like they're like, this week we go to Miami or whatever. But they must get some pre-screening yeah. opportunities. Yeah. yeah. I would think yeah. so. So, Rebecca... Let's talk about this first episode when we meet the families. The first episode introduces us to six kids and their four moms. I'll describe them to you as Abby does in her book because, mm. wow, I don't think she had a ghostwriter because a ghostwriter would say, hey, lady, you look like a monster. Maybe don't do this. <laughs> I can't believe we read her book. I am so impressed and amazed. It, I don't know. I mean, at some point, I felt like a masochist because it was just making me so angry, but I just kept reading it just to be like more ticked off while I was going. I thought maybe like my heart rate was going up and I was burning calories. You know, whatever it works. <laughs> So the first we meet are Maddie and Mackenzie Ziegler, a.k.a. what Abby calls Magnificent Maddie and Rockstar Mackenzie. It's well known that Maddie is Abby Lee's favorite, and the person that makes that known is Abby Lee. Maddie is often found at the top of the pyramid, and you may be thinking, oh, what's the pyramid? Is this an MLM scheme? I guess it could be, but every dance class, Abby rolls out this board, and she puts all the kids' pictures on there in basically place of importance. It doesn't sound like a, it's not really a pyramid though. It's kind of like, have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the lifeguards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News and World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the secret lives of Mormon wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system. Plus, a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Getting the smile and confidence you've been dreaming about all from the comfort of your home isn't a total mystery with bite clear aligners. Just don't be surprised if all your friends start asking, What's your secret? Begin by ordering your at home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B Y T E.com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Like a triangle with multiple? Yeah, levels? it's very lopsided on one side, but the message is clear there's a top and a bottom. <laughs> It's like a weird triangle of self-esteem issues. That's what I kind of took it as. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to come up in therapy in future years, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So Maddie McKenzie's mom is Melissa, and she is a kiss butt, as a lot of Melissa's are. I don't really blame her. <laughs> she also works at the studio, I think, as a discount, but she's always kind of like bubbly and bright-eyed and nodding and whatever Abby wants, you know, she does. But her kid's at the top of the pyramid, so what do, what do you do? So next up is Nia, or the good kid Nia, which, okay, that's a nice enough one. 
Nia is one of my favorites personally. She is not the strongest dancer, but she works really, really hard, and her mom isn't a monster. And I don't understand how they got cast. Right? Yeah, I was I was gonna say I don't know all the moms by name. I was like, but I do know Nia's mom's my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah, Holly. She was like a high school pr- Holly. Or a principal. I don't remember where, yeah. but just very like I don't know. I just could listen to her talk all day, and she was just very smart and very like even even keel. Even keeled is a great word, especially in comparison. Like they, she's very grounding for the group, right? For sure. Next is clever, queenly Chloe just kind of a weird description, but she's sweet and calm, really. Her mom, Christy, though, is not. And she is why reality TV exists. She will put on a show even when no one asks for a show, but I like to think secretly she knows I'd ask nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly is Party Page and Brooding Brooke. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Worried about Brooke. Both are really beautiful kids. And I kind of think Abby hates them for it, honestly, because she always talks about how beautiful they are in this really negative way. Like, it's always kind of like, you're beautiful, but you suck at dancing uh, kind of thing. Dig, yeah. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking, Melissa, that doesn't mean anything that she talks about it in in a negative way. But in Abby's book, though, she says that her parents never called her beautiful because everyone else did. So I kind of took it as... mm, Maybe, I don't know. I feel like there were some issues there. Like she made it sound like my parents didn't call me beautiful, but that was because everyone else was too busy. And I thought, oh, maybe you needed that kind of your parents telling you that, you know, as silly as that sounds, but you need that affirmation growing up and stuff, especially after being named after your dad's gorgeous ex-girlfriend. Yeah. So it seems like there was a few issues there, but moving on. Brooke and Paige's mom is Kelly Highland. She is loud and she gets into it with Abby a lot. In fact, in 2013, Kelly is arrested in New York following this fight with Abby Lee. She was actually, (gasps) yeah, she was booked for assault and harassment, but not officially charged. Apparently, the cause of the fight is Abby brings in this recruit, Kelly gets mad, yells at her, and pulls her hair. Which, can you imagine? But there is like so intense the whole time. Nobody says like really like this they're like i hate this and i hate you (laughs) about everything yeah they're they're talking about going outside or like come at me and you know yeah yeah, i'm not terribly surprised but the interesting thing there is abby and kelly's history kelly is actually a former dancer she was Mm -hmm. part of abby's first dance company production and she stayed with her until she was 14 when she decided to become a cheerleader and you know that rubbed abby the wrong way Yeah, yeah. There's a big cheer dance divide. There is. So the first episode, the kids are all dancing. They're beautiful dancers. We get to hear some alternate song, of course, which is always my favorite to be like, what are they actually dancing to versus what they're (laughs) playing for us? Fun fact, the guy who helped write our theme song with my husband that did some of the guitar, he's had one of his songs on Dance Moms, which I always thought was very cool. cool. Yeah, he didn't tell. It was one I just kind of found. I was like, hey, you were on Dance Moms. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's, that's where a that fun went. tie into the show. I love it. It's all full circle. So in the episode, the kids go to compete and Abby ends up screaming at Chloe's mom and Paige and Brooke's mom. And this is really the same thing that happens week in and week out. And people tuned in for it. And they really tuned in for it. Over the eight seasons it ran on Lifetime, it would end up having over 2 million viewers some weeks which isn't bad for a channel that also played A Recipe for Seduction, the 15-minute movie where Mario Lopez played a sexy version of Colonel Sanders from KFC. I remember hearing about right. this. What in the what? Oh, my gosh. I still haven't watched it because I just don't know if I can no. handle even 15 minutes of cringe. I don't want them to see my view and take it as anything other than why? I don't want them to think morbid curiosity. Let's go see what BK Lounge has. <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do with the Burger King. Sexy him up. Oh gosh, probably get Zach oh. Morris. Yeah. So. <laughs> so too weird. I know. So I bet you're wondering how much money Abby was making on this show, right, Rebecca? I hope more than four dollars an hour. Do you want to take a guess at what you would I, think? I cl- clearly, I'm terrible at this. Okay. No, I enjoy it. Per episode, Abby. Per episode. Hmm. Lifetime. What year did it start? 2010, I believe, or 2010, 2011. Keep in mind, Colonel Canada. Sanders is making that money. Um, 10,000 an episode? 
Oh, wow. Um, so I don't know how to tell you this. But <laughs> Wait, she signed, I'm way off. Is it like 1500 It is 1500 an episode for four years with the option of eight. Who gave her this deal? She did not have representation. And she, as she said, is not good with numbers. I mean, that's, that's a crap deal. So that's crappy. bad. That's so bad. I don't know why I got this gut feeling about 1500 I could tell I was way too high. And I just was like, she got $1,500. I, I just knew you, it. So see, she's, there you go. So up to f- how many seasons at that rate? Okay, so four seasons, but an option up to eight. So I don't know. This is when she wrote her book. So I don't know. Or I, I don't know if that's where I found that number. I don't know. I found a lot of things. Um, an option up to 8000 or Up to eight years. Up to eight seasons. Up to eight years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh man yeah. this is gonna make me feel bad for her you gotta tell me the bad stuff she did no no so no, it's coming like, don't worry so I can steal myself again you'll be over it soon don't worry so according to Abby they filmed six days a week for 12 or more hours so her studio is the set so because of this she's losing income on classes granted she's losing four dollars and forty cents per student per hour so is she losing yeah, that much she's now? probably coming out ahead <laughs> yeah. in this bizarro formula but okay but still something so she's no longer getting the income she once were for the classes but things were going well for abby overall she was really everywhere dance moms becomes a huge hit she has appearances on american idol and eventually has another show abby's ultimate dance competition which i think is when jojo siwa comes into play and oh, why she's in all of our lives now but ultimately, all the extra work she was getting would be her downfall. Dun, dun, dun. Always, always, always. Tale as old as time on this show. And we're going to get right back into the story after a quick break to eat a bag of Sour Patch Kids in her car. So while Abby has been able to pay down some of her debt, thanks to her new dance mom's income, she wasn't being entirely honest with her income. And that's where the issue uh, issues come up. In 2012, there was a judge named Thomas Agresti, and he was getting ready to approve her bankruptcy reorganization. But he was channel surfing one night, and he came across Abby Lee Miller on places like American Idol and showing these new shows. And that's when he realizes she's hiding money. She's not telling us about any of these things. So she claimed in legal documents that she was only making about $8,000 a month. At this point, she's doing appearances, she's doing dance moms, it's a big deal, and so there's no way that she's making just $8,000 a month. Although, if we look at the classes, there was a chance. There was a chance. uh, Right? I mean, let's find out. Show me the numbers. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) This is a Jerry Maguire moment. Show me the money. So, (laughs) So according to this judge... Quote, the problem here is that it looks to the court like she was hiding the ball, and until she got caught, we wouldn't have known about it. Needless to say, the government doesn't like when you lie about your income, especially when you are in the middle of a bankruptcy. So this bankruptcy hearing is all set for December 20th, 2012, but a week before it gets canceled and the judge tells her, hey, any contracts you have, you need to tell us and you need to tell us now. Just a month later... She deposits, you know, $288,000 into an escrow account uh, as income from Collins Avenue, who, you know, sold this uh, show to Lifetime. So the judge is pissed. Can you imagine it'd be like, I made $8,000 a month. Oh, $288,000? I'm sorry. I I got stuck in between my couch cushions. I'm honest There's a whole six figures unspoken for. So this judge is not happy and he gets into it with her attorney and, you know, says this should have been disclosed. Abby Lee claims, though, she didn't even realize she had a contract with with Collins Entertainment. She had just no idea. She just thought it was like, oh, that's what I have to disclose. My bad. My B. I've what else do you need for me? I will totally be honest. And the attorney even says, hey, I didn't know either until the money showed up in this escrow account. So. Big yikes all the way around. Oh, man. But don't worry, Rebecca. The FBI, IRS, and postal inspectors decided, let's look into this. And in 2015, everybody is in on this, right? Yeah, that's the trifecta right there. (laughs) And there you go. That is not the trifecta you need, but it's the trifecta she deserves. So Abby Lee is indicted on 20 charges of bankruptcy fraud, concealment of bankruptcy assets, and false bankruptcy declarations. 
she allegedly hid more than you're good with these numbers. What do you want to say? How much do you think she hid? Above and beyond the 288,000 for all I think tolls? this is in total. Let's say in total. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think she hid like half a million. I think that you were better guessing last time. It was $755,000. Oh, wow. She hides it in multiple bank accounts, in PayPal, in her mom's account. I heard her explain this. She was like, listen, people pay with checks. I need different accounts. People pay with checks. I need different (laughs) accounts. Yeah, it was no sense. No, no, no. (laughs) Unless you're a lawyer and you're, which I learned doing Girardi, you know, you need your your escrow fund for client money and then like your other bank account. Like that makes sense because no commingling of funds. But for Abby's dance company or Abby herself, like, no, that doesn't make any sense. For four dollars and 40 cents a week, I feel (laughs) like we can get some cash there. So she doesn't show any income coming from 2012 to 2013 from the show, which we know she wasn't making much on the show, but she was making something. She claims that she didn't know she couldn't have multiple bank accounts. She went so far as to say, my attorneys got permission from the court. And when I think it was Jedediah, do you know the lady that used to be on The View? Jedediah something is who interviewed her for this tell all thing. And she is telling her they got permission from the court. I don't know what to tell you. And she was like, hey, can you show us where they got permission? I mean, I don't know. They just said, right, you can have lots of accounts. It's no big deal. These four dollars and 40 cent checks aren't going to deposit themselves. Because the court makes decisions that have no, you know, way to check without a record. Zero. Like, no, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Get out of here. Oh, I think she actually even had an account in her deceased dog, uh, Broadway Babies account. Don't ask me how that even started. I saw that in a note somewhere, and I just filed it in my head because I thought, surely that can't be true information. Oh, that's weird. Wait, quick question. So this yeah. sum of money obviously is not from her salary for the show or her dance lessons. These were other appearances where she did manage to get bigger fees. Right. These are from uh, things that she had uh, apparel. She had appearances. Okay. She had so master yeah. classes. I mean, she had gotcha. tons of stuff going on. Okay. And okay. all easily found with a little Google, you know. And now I want to tell you a little about what the FBI found that she had done. And sort of uh, the do's and don'ts of bankruptcy fraud. So if you're filing bankruptcy, I've got some do's and don'ts for you. Rebecca, number one, do be transparent and open with your accountant. Okay. Pretty good, right? Sounds reasonable. Rebecca, don't ask your accountant not to put cash in your bank account or raise any red flags. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shoot. In writing, she asked that. (laughs) Please don't raise any red flags. And don't type red flags. Just don't. (laughs) anywhere. (laughs) Exactly. Rebecca, number two, do make sure that money is coming in through the proper channels and everything is above the table. Don't send text messages that say, we have all this foreign cash and follow it up with (laughs) need a little money laundering. (laughs) Stop. I mean, she can't even play dumb. Like you can't even, I mean, oh, Wow. Okay. Don't feel so bad anymore. Red flags and we need a little money laundering. I just, I can't get over that. It's it's a big don't and it's a big fun detail. (laughs) It is. It's my favorite. Well, one more detail for you. The last do and don't. Do report all cash made outside the U.S. when it's more than $10,000. And you'll never see where I'm going with the second one. Don't. Have your employees embezzle $120,000 into the U.S. from Australia in Ziploc bags in their luggage. Who Who did it? I don't know. It didn't say the names, but several people. Oh, my gosh. That is bold. In Ziploc bags. messed up. That are see-through, Rebecca. I I know. I know. I mean, that is so messed up to make your employee do that or to ask them to. I mean, I'm sure they were paid above and beyond their salary, but. Wow, this was criminal. I mean, like criminal intent. Totally, yes. Um, I do wonder if the Ziploc bags had little notes like, you know, like your mom would write on stuff like Have a good for day, money honey. laundering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I just Act casual. Yeah. <laughs> Love Abby. No, she wouldn't say that. She would just draw a red flag and put, do you know what this means? Remember, winky face, winky face. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So good. if you guys were looking at filing bankruptcy, I really hope you'll take some of these into account because things did not go really well for her. 
So when she's originally charged, prosecutors want five years in prison and $5 million in fine for these 20 counts of fraud in October of 2015. She originally pled not guilty to one count of not reporting an international monetary transaction. I'm thinking that's that $120,000 in <laughs> Ziploc high honeys and one count <laughs> of concealing bankruptcy assets and faced up to 30 months in prison. Wow. Abby's trial, though, for this was delayed over and over again. But Rebecca, you're going to be happy about this. Because of all the delays, she was able to take 10 getaways that summer. She went to Las Vegas and Nevada and Mexico. I mean, she's got to get out and travel the world. Uh, that doesn't seem like the judge is going to love that. In little Ziploc baggies. <laughs> <laughs> So ultimately, though, in 2016 in Pennsylvania, she pleaded guilty to concealing assets during her Chapter 11 bankruptcy hearing and failing to report money over $10,000 into the country from our friends, the little Ziploc baggies in Australia in 2014. She also had to pay a $40,000 fine and a $120,000 judgment for the currency reporting violation. She continued to have her sentencing postponed up to six times in about seven months, I don't know how they keep doing this. She's finally sentenced to one year and one day in prison, followed by two years of supervised release. Whoa. So we're not done with the Abbeyisms, <laughs> Rebecca. In court, she tells the judge, you know, I wish we could have met another way. I would have loved for you to have taken my dance class. I think you would have really enjoyed it. And then she said, quote, I'm very sorry for what I've done. My name has been dragged through the mud. I don't think those two go together. Wouldn't you just say, I'm sorry, and leave your name out of it? Uh, absolutely. When speaking to a judge, yes. And I mean, the dance comment gets me. It's like, she can't help herself, but like, no. the <laughs> dance All, to everybody. Exactly. So She's funny. just, you've, you've got to dance. If you dance, you might not have even given me any kind of sentence. You never know. What a strange thing to say in court. Jazz hands. And then she walked out. <laughs> <laughs> Shante. There you go. So three months before reporting to prison, though, she ends up having weight loss surgery in which 80% of her stomach was removed. She becomes inmate number 35991068 in Victorville, which is known as a prison camp. It's low security, you know, houses nonviolent criminals. And it's about 90 miles north of her L.A. home. So she's prosecuted in Pennsylvania, but the judge allows her to be sentenced in California to be near her home in L.A., which I think the judge was like, OK, we don't want to pay for you to be in our prison. Sashay over there. Go ahead. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Get over there. So while she's in prison, though, she kept quiet. She didn't do anything wrong. Do you believe me? Yes or no? No. OK. No. She wanted to start a dance troupe. <laughs> oh, I wish. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> If that's true, somebody tell me. So while she's in prison, she allegedly gets into one argument, and it's with this inmate, and they say they get into it in the rec room because she's always crying and miserable, and the inmate said, she ain't beep. And really, you could put any word you want in there. There's there's a plethora, and after you've met her, you know there could be several. So yeah. her bunkie, though, you'll love this, said that <laughs> all she did all day was cry and read trashy romance novels she got from the prison library. Relatable. I mean, yeah, you got to get through the day somehow. <laughs> it's a weird way to get <laughs> through it. the same thing. <laughs> I know. We don't know what was available to her there. So in March of 2018, she's released to the Residential Reentry Center in Long Beach, which is a place that's really structured and supervised. You can get employment counseling, job placement, financial management assistance. Um, she would go on to pass her real estate class and got a personal finance class diploma, which she could have used back in 2010. Yeah, day late, dollar short. And there you go. <laughs> but shortly after she's released to this residential reentry center, Abby Lee was in immense pain in her neck and jaw. So things take a turn oh, here no. for sure. She goes to a local urgent clinic and has a bunch of tests done, and she's sent home undiagnosed. Because her jaw hurts, she ends up going to a dentist. They check all of her teeth, say, nothing's wrong with your teeth, but the pain keeps persisting. So she eventually calls her orthopedist and says, I'm in extreme pain. It's in my neck. It's radiating down my arm. I can barely move. He tells her to go to the ER. So she goes to the ER on Friday, and by Monday, she has deteriorated tremendously. She was 
fully paralyzed from the neck down. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So doctors thought it was a spinal infection, and she ends up having emergency surgery on Tuesday. It's a five-hour surgical procedure known as a multi-level laminectomy. They remove part or several vertebrae to help release this pressure she's having on her spinal cord. He sends this tissue off to be tested, thinking it's going to come back as a spinal infection. But it comes back as Burkitt lymphoma, which is an aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. Mm. Due to her health condition, she ends up being released from the halfway house to recover and go through treatment. Within two days of her surgery, she's at Cedars Sinai Medical Center, starting what would be 10 rounds of chemotherapy treatments, back to back bags of chemo, three spinal taps, and full lumbar injections. In 2019, oh. though, she's cancer free and she started making really good uh, progress. She has uh, PET scans every three months to check for any reoccurrence, and she was doing really, really well. She ends up having another surgery in 2019, and now she's just on a walker. So she was able to move around and walk after all this, but she's she's just in a lot of pain. It's It's been a very, very hard journey for her. But let's turn it around a little. In the meantime, she has continued teaching from her home in L.A. over Zoom. Did you know you could take a Zoom dance class? Uh, you can take a Zoom everything, so sure, why not? Would you take a Zoom Zumba class? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> they just call it Zumba. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> she has a dance studio that she had started in L.A. a few years back. She had the one in Philadelphia, but after all of her legal troubles, she ended up closing it down and she rents the building out. She basically wants nothing to do with Pennsylvania. She felt like she was treated poorly. The doctor mm. did not want to take her Zoom dance classes. You know, there's a little bit of hurt there. <laughs> It's now being rented by other people, and she's just the landlord. And through it all, Abby's documented really everything. She's documented the surgeries, the highs, the lows, her life post-prison. And according to her, she wants to make a documentary, although there's no name for it yet. Uh, After her experience in prison and in a halfway house, she wants to create something new. She said, here's another wonderful quote, quote, Imagine the real world when it first started on MTV and everybody was crazy about it. Now imagine that like on crack. Please help me figure out where that's going. That's terrible. That's like a terrible description and build up. Yeah, that, I, it's not where I thought it ended at all. I was like, what are no. you creating? I don't think people are wanting any of that. And she's really not out of trouble yet. So where she plans to have this show, we don't know, but we know it won't be on Lifetime. Back in April of 2020, Lifetime planned to have this virtual dance-off series with Abby, but they cut ties with her after accusations of racism. Adriana Smith, yeah, mom to a season eight dancer named Cameron, made this post about Abby Lee on Instagram after Abby Lee did the blackout box in support of Black Lives Matter. And the mom wrote, quote, a statement from her that sticks in my mind to this day during my time on Dance Mom season eight is... I know you grew up in the hood with only a box of eight crayons, but I grew up in the country club with a box of 64. She said, this to me shows that you think you're better than me and higher rank and altogether superior to me. Another mom said she tried to spin my daughter Cameron as being the poor one and they're on a scholarship. She continuously put Cameron in afros. It was a traumatic experience that I wish on no one. So for her part, Abby Lee responded and said, quote, I realize that racism can come not just from hate, but also from ignorance. No matter the cause, it was harmful and it's my fault. While I cannot change the past or remove the harm I've done, I promise to educate myself, learn, grow, and do better. While I hope to one day earn your forgiveness, I recognize that words alone are not enough. I understand it takes time and genuine change. Apparently, Lifetime agrees, and the show, which was slated to begin on television in June of 2020, was scrapped from their lineup, and they said they will not be having Abby Lee join them for any future Dance Mom seasons. Wow, I had not heard that. And honestly, of everything you shared and I learned about Abby, that's kind of the most appalling. I'm mm-hmm. glad she gave that kind of standard response that we hear from a lot of oh, people. Oh, you know, these she days. didn't write like, that. Well, exactly. I, you know, whatever. I'm glad there was a response, I guess, but that's, that's pretty awful. That's really awful. It is. And I'm glad that Lifetime took a stand with that and said, we're not going to do anything else with her but it's a wild story right just all the things she went through I didn't know any other way to set it up because there's a lot of really sad stuff but there's a lot of there is she's been through a lot but you know when a when a person that we discuss 
knowingly commits these crimes, I always find it so much more interesting and also like, wow. I mean, she wasn't, oops, you know, didn't know that was happening. Blame it on someone else. I mean, she really was going out of her way to there was to get one over trail mix and twenty thousand dollars in Ziploc bags. I mean, she yeah was, yeah it's she crazy was stuff. yeah. But you know, yeah, all I knew of her is what I've seen, and I, I like having some of her story round out the very big TV personality that right. she is because I just I just I, I could never watch my kid. And subject no. my child to that week after week. I know if they love dance and you love dance. I don't know. That show is complicated. That is a, a psychological feast for someone, you know, studying yeah. the dynamics between the moms, the daughters, and then Abby. Like, there's a lot going on, actually, that I think is really disturbing. Oh, for sure. Am I overthinking so, it? <laughs> no, no, no. So I uh, watched that tell all I was saying before she went to prison. It was taped like two weeks before she went to prison. And she, you know, she was asked like, who do you keep in contact with? She's like, none of them. She doesn't have anything to do with any of the kids. She's like, I raised them, which, okay. Um, uh, yeah, like I think you can take that off. I get that she's a huge part of their life, but I think yeah, that's for sure. not a cool thing to say especially to the parents it's like no that's not true but she said that and she just was basically when the interviewer Jedediah said you know would you want to have a reconciliation or anything she's like no absolutely not it just seems like she's got a lot of hurt there and a lot of anger and you know a lot of that probably self-inflicted um a lot mm -hmm. of self-projection. I feel like her childhood might not be as rosy as she kind of makes it out to be. So anyway, um, yeah, she's a very complicated person, but kind of a garbage person. Can I say that? Kind of. I think I you know. can. You yeah. read the book. You're allowed. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's you a, did the work. There's a lot. <laughs> I have done the work for you, everyone. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I really did. I really kind of hope she gets like help. Like I think she needs to do some self work. You know, she's healthy, which I'm glad, you know, hopefully right. she'll stay cancer free. She's young enough that she's got some years left. Like do the right. work, you know, but do, I know. do better, Abby. <laughs> yeah. There um, you go. Because she's probably a very hurt person. For and sure. I think she was an incredibly hurtful person. Yes. And I think there's a way to be a dynamic coach or instructor of anything and get the best out of kids and raise their potential and move them forward without completely being insane and crushing their spirits and fighting with their parents. Right. Like, that's got to be a thing, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> I have to believe it is. I really have to believe it is. But she said her mom was never like that. And her mom would kind of come behind her and be like, she doesn't mean that when she was really loud and aggressive and stuff. Huh. And results wise, she's got tons of great dancers. But let's, yeah. you know. What are their therapy bills looking like? Who knows? Yeah, find a new tactic. Yeah, but but I don't take away from her credibility and to hear right. how young she seems to have really good instincts that she honed very young. And I always wonder about choreographers or even coaches who don't play the sport. Like I, I right. came into the show not knowing her story and I'm like, I wonder if she was ever a dancer. So that's fascinating to me that you can know the mechanics and choreography and get it and so teach well. it mm -hmm. and not be able to do it. Like, right. that's very interesting to me. I totally agree. I always assumed she had been a dancer years before. Me too. I would have assumed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, she was around it, but she knows it. She absolutely knows it. I hope all those girls are okay. I wonder what they're all doing. I saw some pictures and they look like girls just this age where they're all hot now. Like, how do you get to be hot <laughs> in your 17, 18. I didn't know that was possible. Wasn't an option I thought I had. Still don't, quite Have frankly. I but they're like stop. all like very makeup and tiktok -y and all that kind of stuff. So Maddie it was recently in a movie that Sia created that was panned. Oh. Uh, it was called Music. And she played a person with autism, I believe. And it was not well received because she... It should have probably been somebody that had autism, so she had I to put it this. on. Yeah, it was not. I watched yeah. a preview and was like, yikes, I can't believe this not got made. Not touching that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Have I shared the TikTok with you? And if I haven't, I'm doing it immediately after. Uh, the girl who's like, um, girls, right? like, what does it say? It's like teenage girls now. Right, versus and then. then. It, versus me getting ready when I was a teenager. Have I sent that to mm -hmm. you? I'm going to post that. Twice. <laughs> I did send it to you twice. Did yes, I really? I didn't tell you the second time, but yes, you really liked that one. 
Oh, I'm bringing it up a third time. This is getting <laughs> embarrassing, but it's so relatable it because is. there is this thing where girls are really pretty and they all learned how to put makeup on, I guess, because right. YouTube. Yeah. And we had to like read magazines and, and like trust no, each other and let their, you couldn't trust anyone. <laughs> yeah. Let their yeah. friend put an eyebrow pencil to use as lip liner. Everything could be doubled up. Rebecca, or, everything could be used twice. God forbid tweezers. You let them at your brows with tweezers. That was like half our problem was we just were missing half our brows. Yeah. Um, I think girls got that memo. Like, it's okay. Keep keep your brows. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, I think about this a lot too. <laughs> I do worry about those girls. Also, you didn't talk about Vivi and her mom, did you? Oh, I didn't bring up Vivi and her mom. Her mom with Candy Apple Studios. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came, but that ended up being kind of her nemesis throughout. I have Googled them though, and yeah. It's no um, discrediting the story. They just Vivi was live in the same house together. Oh, That's something. Who does? I mean, Vivi and her mom, as per oh, okay. they should. But <laughs> I might have um, left like, home. <laughs> and no, I just I distinctly remember watching and being like, that girl doesn't want to be there. Like that mom's no, a lot. Like, she is, that was and sad. she had the very skunk highlights. Remember in the early two thousand tens. Yeah, the fashion and the hair on that show look a lot older than it is. Yeah, it is. Um, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'm from Florida, so I can say this, but Florida and Philadelphia are probably 10 years behind New York. So no, whatever you were doing in 2010, I'll be doing this. Year. Cold shoulders? New here. Nobody <laughs> knew. <laughs> I don't oh, believe okay. you. That was uh, good. That was yay. really good. Okay, good. Well, Rebecca, before we go, let's do the new the new way we can break the internet with our new shows. What show have you been watching? What are your clues? Okay, the first one's going to shock your pants off. Never I'm said that very good with my pants being on, thank you, and my socks. So let's see what can come off. Got to watch. Okay, HBO. Oh, what? Didn't I, see this coming. I Exactly. I know. It's shock and awe. Okay, I'm, I've really made this one... Okay, it's doable. HBO, mm -hmm. Designing Women, and Mayor of Easttown. So real quick, Rebecca, I've got Vegas, Joan Rivers-esque, HBO. We're both watching Hacks. <laughs> okay, I'm surprised and not surprised. I guess because we were just on Mayor of Easttown, so Jean Smart is all in our brain, and she's so brilliant, and probably it was advertised while watching Mayor of Easttown on HBO, but I also didn't expect that. Your clues are really good. I had to scramble <laughs> to get mine. Um, I like them both. Yay, that's so fun. It's so fun that we're watching the same show. Yeah, I really enjoy it, right? It's it's super fun. I think it's super funny. Yeah, it's really great. I really, great. really like it. So Jean Smart is basically a Joan Rivers-esque entertainer, an older comedian who's working in Vegas, and she kind of needs fresh jokes, and this writer who sent a tweet she shouldn't have tweeted ends up getting fired comes on as a writer with her and it's all about their dynamic right and kind of learning from yeah each other. yeah they share a manager so the manager kind of hooked yeah, her up with this job because he felt gene smart's character needed some fresh energy and right. youthful content and so their dynamic yeah follows their struggles and ensuing work relationship friendship yeah. it's, um, it's really really fun it is. I'm an episode behind. The last one I watched at the end, they were both watching like Law and Order together. And I just love that. Them just kind of trash talking so to each other on the cute. phone. So yeah, good. I, I it. think I'm caught up. I think I'm up. I think I watched the most recent one. But um, yeah, again, it's a good cleanser, good taking a break from other things show. And Jean Smart is such a talent. I think the girl playing She's the so young great. writer is great. Yeah. And and all the peripheral characters are really strong. Yeah. It's, it's it's good. And I don't see a lot of shows. I guess a lot of things have been filmed in Vegas, but um it's an interesting little peek into that world. It is. Um it that is. like showbiz world, living at a hotel mm -hmm. and anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. I love Hacks. it. Well, there you go. That'll be so easy to make the little flyer this week. Just one. <laughs> one image. I'll I'll double it. <laughs> Yay. Seeing double. Before we go, we're going to be playing a promo from our friend Laura with One Strange Thing in the fall line. She's so talented, so funny, so tall, and a very, very lovely person. And so we hope you'll check out her show. Yeah, I love her. love her work. Yeah. And Rebecca, we need clues. What are, what's, what are, what's coming next? Okay. Next up is a good story that I am 
excited to start researching. I'm just <laughs> at the beginning. So I don't know if there's things I haven't discovered yet. I just, who knows, but I've sure, heard, yeah. I'm recording. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, for better or for worse, here are your three clues. This was kind of hard. Okay. The first clue is cha-cha. Okay. The second clue is barn. Oh my gosh. I have the no idea. The third clue is Chris. Chris? That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Chris, cha-cha, and barn. This is blowing my mind. I have no idea what's happening. I love blowing your mind. Oh, I'm so excited. <sighs> um, well, I'll see you in a week or so and tell you all about it. I can't wait. Have a great two weeks, everyone. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you, as always, for listening. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Everyone enjoys a little mystery. And on one strange thing, that's just what you'll get. Every other week, One Strange Thing presents forgotten stories from America's news archives. They all have something in common, a single element that can't quite be explained. I'm Laura Norton. Join me on One Strange Thing, and you'll hear about a class ring that disappeared on one continent and reappeared on another, and a man in Maine whose vision was restored by a lightning strike. And then there's the house in Atlanta that dripped human blood, and those are just the start. Subscribe to One Strange Thing now, wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening to Criminality. If you're enjoying the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and give the show a rating and review. The reality is it would be a crime to keep your thoughts to yourself. And come join the fun outside of the podcast and follow us on social media. We are at Criminality Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Memes are welcome. We'll see you in two weeks with a new episode. Until then, you can catch my co-host Melissa on her weekly show, Moms and Murder. And Rebecca Sebastian on her podcast, Dialogue, a true crime conversation. Don't forget, loving reality isn't a crime.